Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all. Let us begin today's service with the singing of hymn number 42. <clears throat> Come thou all transforming spirit, bless the sower and the seed. Let each heart thy grace inherit, raise the weak, the hungry feed. From the gospel, from the gospel, now supply thy people's need. Hymn number 42. <laughs> The scriptural selection is from Ephesians. I, Paul, was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Let's have a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer, and I shall follow with its spiritual interpretation as found in Science and Health. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's unite in singing hymn number 119. Holy Spirit, source of gladness, come with all thy radiance bright. Lift our burdens and our sadness, o'er thy children shed thy light. Hymn number 119. The members of this church extend a loving welcome to all of those visiting us today and especially to those visiting us on Zoom. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the First Church of Christ Scientists in Boston, Massachusetts, a, a church designed in the words of its founder, Mary Baker Eddy, to commemorate the word and works of our Master, which should reinstate primitive Christianity and its lost element of healing. A Sunday school for children and teenagers meets every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Students are taught the scriptures and the healing truths of Christian science to, for use in their daily lives. Every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. we have a testimony meeting where after readings from the Bible and Science and Health, members are uh, able to share testimonies of healing and comments about how Christian science is working in their life. In our reading room located in this building, the Bible as well as the writings of Mary Baker Eddy and other Christian science literature may be studied, borrowed, or purchased. 
The reading room is open for a half hour following each Sunday service and for a half hour preceding each Wednesday service. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate every valued member of the congregation. This being the first Sunday of the month, I shall read from the Manual of the Mother Church by Mary Baker Eddy, Article 8, Section 1, A Rule for Motives and Acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. The words for our solo are from the discoverer and founder of Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy.
Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses and divinely authorized. The lesson sermon for today begins on page 24 of the Christian Science Quarterly. The subject is spirit. The golden text is from the new King James Version of the Bible. John. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The responsive reading is from Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. The following readings comprise our sermon. The Bible, Job. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good.
Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. God is infinite, omnipresent spirit. Creator, spirit, mind, intelligence, the animating divine principle of all that is real and good, self-existent life, truth, and love, that which is perfect and eternal, the opposite of matter and evil, which have no principle. God, who made all that was made, and could not create an atom or an element the opposite of himself. In divine science, the universe, including man, is spiritual, harmonious, and eternal. In science, man is the offspring of spirit. The beautiful, good, and pure constitute his ancestry. His origin is not like that of mortals in brute instinct, nor does he pass through material conditions prior to reaching intelligence. Spirit is his primitive and ultimate source of being. God is his father, and life is the law of his being. Earth a sphere, a type of eternity and immortality, which are likewise without beginning or end. To material sense, earth is matter. To spiritual sense, it is a compound idea. God, spirit, dwelling in infinite light and harmony from which emanates the true idea is never reflected by aught but the good. Psalms Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Genesis. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. And the flood was forty days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his son wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Psalms 
O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. From beginning to end, the scriptures are full of accounts of the triumph of spirit, mind, over matter. God is the life or intelligence which forms and preserves the individuality and identity of animals as well as of men. Ark, safety, the idea or reflection of truth proved to be as immortal as its principle. The understanding of spirit destroying belief in matter. God and man coexistent and eternal. Science showing that the spiritual realities of all things are created by him and exist forever. The ark indicates temptation overcome and followed by exaltation. Spirit imparts the understanding which uplifts consciousness and leads into all truth. The psalmist saith, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. For right reasoning, there should be but one fact before the thought, namely, spiritual existence. In reality, there is no other existence, since life cannot be united to its unlikeness, mortality. The manifestations of evil, evil, which counterfeit divine justice, are called in the scriptures the anger of the Lord. In reality, they show the self-destruction of error or matter and point to matter's opposite, the strength and permanency of spirit. The Gospels of Luke, Mark, and Matthew. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. There was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but but Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. The Christ was the spirit which Jesus implied in his own statements. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I and my Father are one. This Christ or divinity of the man Jesus, was his divine nature, the godliness which animated him. Our master, 
taught no mere theory, doctrine, or belief. It was the divine principle of all real being, which he taught and practiced. Jesus taught but one God, one spirit, who makes man in the image and likeness of himself, of spirit, not of matter. Man reflects infinite truth, life, and love. Every day makes its demands upon us for higher proofs rather than professions of Christian power. These proofs consist solely in the destruction of sin, sickness, and death by the power of spirit as Jesus destroyed them. This is an element of progress, and progress is the law of God, whose law demands of us only what we can certainly fulfill. Maintain the facts of Christian science, that spirit is God and therefore cannot be sick, that what is termed matter cannot be sick, that all causation is mind, acting through spiritual law. Then hold your ground with the unshaken understanding of truth and love, and you will win. Colossians, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. John, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Galatians. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Jesus represented Christ, the true idea of God. Christ presents the indestructible man whom Spirit creates, constitutes, and governs. Christ illustrates that blending with God, his divine principle, which gives man dominion over all the earth. The Bible teaches transformation of the body by the renewal of spirit. Consciousness constructs a better body when faith in matter has been conquered. Correct material belief by spiritual understanding and spirit will form you anew. Let us feel the divine energy of spirit, bringing us into newness of life and recognizing no mortal nor material power as able to destroy. Let us rejoice that we are subject to the divine powers that be. Such is the true science of being. Isaiah. 
And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turned from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Acts. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. 1 Corinthians Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Baptism Purification by Spirit Submergence in Spirit We are willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. The baptism of spirit, washing the body of all the impurities of flesh, signifies that the pure in heart see God and are approaching spiritual life and its demonstration. Our baptism is a purification from all error. Our church is built on the divine principle, love. Christianity causes men to turn naturally from matter to spirit, as the flower turns from darkness to light. Man then appropriates those things which I have not seen nor ear heard. The periods of spiritual ascension are the days and seasons of mind's creation in which beauty, sublimity, purity and holiness, yea, the divine nature, appear in man and the universe, never to disappear. Psalms O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works! Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Isaiah Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, 
and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. Have you ever pictured this heaven and earth inhabited by beings under the control of supreme wisdom? Let us rid ourselves of the belief that man is separated from God and obey only the divine principle, life and love. Here is the great point of departure for all true spiritual growth. All the evidence of the physical sense and all the knowledge obtained from physical sense must yield to science, to the immortal truth of all things. As mortals gain more correct views of God and man, multitudinous objects of creation, which before were invisible, will become visible. When we realize that life is spirit, never in nor of matter, this understanding will expand into self-completeness, finding all in God good and needing no other consciousness. Spirit and its formations are the only realities of being. When we learn the way in Christian science and recognize man's spiritual being, we shall behold and understand God's creation, all the glories of earth and heaven and man. Let's unite in singing hymn number 88. Gracious Spirit, dwell with me. 
I myself would gracious be, and with words that help and heal, would thy life in mine reveal, and with actions bold in me, Christ's own gracious spirit speak. Hymn number 88. The Scientific Statement of Being from the Christian Science Textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And a correlative scripture from 1 John Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I am with you, saith the Lord. My spirit remaineth among you. Amen. 